Okay, so again, thanks for joining me um, for the second video in preparation of your uh, quiz coming up on Friday. Um, we will pick off where we left off, uh, problem number five. And in this uh, video, we're going to look at um, pretty much just those two laws, the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. But we'll start here with this example. So if I tell you that P is, it looks like, it looks like it will rain. And if I tell you statement Q is I will take my umbrella to work. And I tell you here is the statement in symbols and I want you to write me the conditional that is represented by this statement. Okay. Well remember we talked about what this means. This means if P then Q. Okay, remember we talked about if P then Q, or we said P implies Q. So we just take these statements and we create a conditional. If, and then we look where statement P. Statement P is this one. If it, this should be looks, not likes. I'm sorry. Um, right here, let me erase. This should be looks. It looks like. It looks like it will rain. So that's statement P. So if it looks like it will rain, then Q. Well, what is Q? Then I will take my umbrella to work. Okay, so we have written the, the symbolic statement, if P then Q, as if it looks like it will rain, then I will take my umbrella to work, just from the P and Q I gave you above. Okay? All right. So just understanding what the symbols mean. All right, so now, uh, problem six. Okay? I'm going to write a little bit here. Okay. So let me um, write these two statements. All right. So statement one: If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And then statement two. Angle A is congruent to angle B. Okay, and the question is, what can you conclude, if anything? Well, let's take a look at these two statements. And again, let's try to create the, the arguments in symbols. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. This is a P implies Q, or an if P then Q. The hypothesis is the P, and the conclusion is the Q. So what is this saying? This is talking about two angles being congruent. If we look at the statement above, this is saying that Q is true. So the question is, can we conclude something about these statements? And again, remember in class, we talked about how this arrow is going. If I know P, then I can conclude Q. But I don't know P. I'm given Q. And I'm supposed to try to conclude something about P? It's not going to work. So you cannot make any conclusions. No conclusions. Okay. No conclusions. Now, if I change the problem, so if it's changed, changed, okay, if it's changed, and I say statement two is that angle A and angle B are right angles. If I tell you that instead of what we told you above. If I tell you this statement, then this statement is P. This is saying that P is true. And using the law of detachment, I can then say that Q is true. I can say that they are congruent. I can say that angle A and angle B are congruent. I would be able to say that angle A is congruent to angle B and this would be by the law of detachment. Okay. 
Okay. So understand this idea of if they give you the conclusion, you cannot deduce anything about the hypothesis. But if I give you the hypothesis, you can definitely say something about the conclusion. Okay. All right. And then one more similar to this. Last problem I have for you, problem seven. Okay. So again, let me write two statements. If Tim gets stung by a bee. Then he will get very ill. And poor poor Tim, he must be allergic to some bee stings. So if Tim gets stung by a bee, then he will get very ill. The second statement is if Tim gets very ill, then he will go to the hospital. If Tim gets very ill, then he will go to the hospital. So the question is, can we conclude anything from these two statements? Okay, and the, the answer is yes, we can. All right, if we use the law of syllogism, okay, this is a P implies Q, or if P then Q. And then notice what the first part of the second sentence. The first part of the second sentence is the same as the second part of the first sentence. This whole fact of he will get very ill. So this is a Q implies R. And now look at the setup. P implies Q, Q implies R. Then we should be able to conclude that P implies R. What that would mean is our concluding sentence would be if Tim gets stung by a bee, then we'll go to the R. Then he will go to the hospital. Okay. And there's the statement we can make by the law of syllogism. Okay. So, I mean, this, this quiz on Friday is not going to have a lot of numbers, right? Not a lot of math, but it's a different kind of math. It's a logic. It's geometry thinking, okay? So just make sure you know conditional, converse, the postulates, biconditional, and then these two laws, law of detachment and law of syllogism. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on Friday.